welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, good morning. Here we are in uh, December, and uh, we're again, we're taping this a little bit ahead, so we don't have our... Uh, I've got some Christmas pictures behind me. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, I told Dan that uh, this weekend, because I'm, I'm even though we're doing so much taping ahead, um, I can't stand that I don't have a Christmas thing on my wall for a while we're taping December. So we're going to go ahead and decorate one wall for Christmas, I think. There you go. <laughs> Just so that we can have a little ambiance. That's it. Yeah. Christmas is beautiful. Uh, what a great time to celebrate the life of God and uh, uh Advent, and we have an Advent app actually that uh, we have on our website that you could get, and uh, we're always excited about that and encourage people to do Advent. We've always done it with our kids and grandkids uh, mm-hmm. to uh, help them walk through the life of Christ uh, in terms of the Old Testament and uh, the life of Jesus, and you know what what it means that He came to Earth and was born uh, so that we could have eternal life and you know what a, mm-hmm. what, a priv- what a privilege that is so that's why God wants us to celebrate uh, advent the the uh, initiation of his giving Christ to us uh, so, right. that, so that we could have righteousness and, and live a life with him because of his righteousness and yeah uh, it's an amazing story. And I love even the the intentionality of advent also when I think about coming into um, the Christmas season, it is so easy to get caught up in everything else that is going on, even the good stuff, you know, the parties, the activities, things that you're doing through your church, even, um, and the shopping and all of these things, which are all great things. However, um, we need to be intentional and in really celebrating what the season is and set ourselves up in a way to be able to enjoy it and not miss the season. Yeah. Yeah. And if, uh, if you did miss, we had a, a, a podcast that uh, uh, is going to come out on November 17th, actually Thursday, uh, guest Thursday, but that's going to be the four of us that we're going to share about that very thing. Uh, we should, mm-hmm. we did share, we're sharing about that. So if you missed it, go back and look at the November 17th uh, guest, guest day. And we talk about um, how do you, in, basically, how do you enjoy Christmas Mm-hmm. As opposed to let it be a burden and something that you're just right. like, I can hardly wait till it's over, um, which is a problem in, in today because of the busyness uh, uh, companies, by the way, that we work for, um, you know, they're they're focused on on more and more, do more and more work, mm-hmm. particularly as you approach the year end, because we got to get sales out the door, you know, et cetera. So right. uh, it's going to be an important thing. So as we're we've been talking about prayer. Um, keep in your mind remembering uh, that prayer looks like the way the disciples functioned with Jesus for three years is they just did mm-hmm. life. They just did life together, and prayer was this dialogue, intimate relationship, discussion, uh, questions, challenges, uh, even moments where Jesus would say something and they wouldn't respond, and he kind of left it there mm-hmm. uh, and just say, "Well." when you have a heart to pursue this, we will. Uh, I'm not here to force everything on you. It's, it's where's your heart at? And, and right. do you have a heart to stay with me and let me, you know, deliver to you? I, w- I was just talking to um, a lady actually this morning and um, we were talking about the examples of, of Paul and Ananias and, and Cornelius and, and Peter where uh, both Ananias and Peter had a difficulty uh, with something that God spoke to them. Mm-hmm. And they said, I can't just automatically do this uh, because I know that obedience isn't a blind obedience. It isn't, I'll do it, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, um, I'm struggling with this. It doesn't make sense to me. Something's in the way here, but I'm going to stay with you and dialogue for you to reveal to me more and understanding, give me more understanding and Mm. and work it 
until I see what you see. Um, and that's right. the beauty of the relationship is that God says, I'm not demanding that you operate under law or you better do it or else. It's rather stay with me. You're going to see things that are going to be uh, either hard to believe or something that you don't un understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you stay with me and dialogue with me, prayer is speaking, understanding, sharing, and receiving. Let me speak to you. Uh, I'm listening to you. You listen to me. I'll get you there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what prayer is all about. And and last time, Beautiful. last time we, we gave the example of Nehemiah, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, had, you know, he was living in luxury. Uh, uh, he was part of the captivity, uh, one of the remnant. And uh, he learns that, that Jerusalem is still destroyed. And it kind of struck him is, well, that's sad to me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Father, what do you have to say about that? Right. And God starts to speak to him, covenant, and here's my promise, and uh, and here's how I want to involve you, and yeah, but do you know I can't do that easily, and I understand that. Let me work with you. It was four months of dialogue, right. dialoguing to get clarity about, okay, here's now what I'm about ready to do, and, and by the way, he, he says, today, he woke up, and God said, today's the day. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, okay, I'm praying to God. May you give me favor today because you've, you've, you've laid it all out, but now it's got to happen in reality. Um, and so what, what he did was he, he took the initiation of God speaking something mm -hmm. and took it all the way to uh, what we call faith. I believe I received right. it. I believe it. Uh, well, there's, a, there's a, a story and a uh, uh, scripture that helps us understand what he did and how it works. So uh, this is 2 Samuel 7, uh, 25 to 29. Let me set up the premise, and then we can talk about sure. it. Sure. Uh, David, uh, who is, remember, he's he's learned to abide. He's learned to walk in the Spirit. He's learned to seek God's will. By the way, he wasn't perfect, as we know. Uh, and the way that they functioned was... They set up a tabernacle, mm -hmm. and think of the tabernacle as a as a very large canvas tent. Mm -hmm. And they would set it up, and they would carry it around with them, and uh, it would serve as the place called the tent of meeting. Mm -hmm. And the leaders, interesting enough, anybody could go in there and talk to God. Right. Uh, the presence of God. Um, and that's how they that's how they function is they would carry the tabernacle with them. Uh, and like, for example, uh, in the wilderness, uh, Moses had a tabernacle. Uh, now, by the way, uh, and this is really interesting. Anybody could go to the tabernacle and talk to God It literally have audible voices. Here's what I have to say. What do you have to say? And they'd hear him. Mm -hmm. And Moses did for sure. Um, now there was a section of the tabernacle that only the priest could go into. Is that correct? Yeah, there was, there was that the, something? that was in the, the Holy of Holies, the, the Holy or... of Holy in the sacrifice place mm -hmm. where they would perform things on behalf of the nation, but, but they would be able to go into and have the tent of meeting. Right. Uh, and, um, uh, there's a statement in, uh, this is in, uh, Exodus, uh, that Moses would go in and out of the tent of meeting. Um, and then it said Joshua and Caleb, mm -hmm. remember, they're the ones that said, we believe God, let's go to the promised land. Everybody else said, we're not willing to go. Right. And, and God said, okay, then you're not going to go, including Joshua and Caleb. But um, they kept going to the, t and there's a verse that said they kept basically staying in the tent of meeting all the time, talking to God. Uh, mm. And God was revealing to them, you're going to be able to go. Let me help you understand it, etc. Uh, and and by the way, the other people that had the privilege of going didn't go because uh, mm. they didn't care. You know, like, well, we're we're stuck. That's it. Uh, so David, uh, with this, uh, let's say this temporary traveling tabernacle, said, I think it's a good idea that we actually make a permanent place for God mm -hmm. and let's build a temple 
here in Jerusalem that, right. that we can then meet with him and follow the sacrificial system and all of that would be in this place here in Jerusalem. Isn't that a good idea? Mm-hmm. Um, and so he goes to Nathan and Nathan is a, is a, think of Nathan as part of David's Nathan's a prophet, right? A prophet inner circle. Mm-hmm. Hey, Nathan, since you also talk to God, could you confirm that, mm-hmm. that this is a good idea? And Nathan said, yes, it is. Go ahead, go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. Um, God goes to Nathan uh, and says, uh, come here, son. <laughs> uh, you forgot something. You forgot to ask me. <laughs> you, you assumed, because it's logical, but you didn't ask me. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, and you need to tell David, no, he cannot build me a temple. He's a man of war. And um, I'm not going to have him build me a temple. By the way, his son will. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll build me a temple, but not him. But I tell you what, um, I've got a promise for David. Mm. Tell David that um, his house lineage, his, his uh, legacy, will have the Messiah come and mm-hmm. save Israel. And it's going to come through his lineage. Uh, by the way, he was, remember where uh, he uh, uh, was uh, focused on uh, was Bethlehem. Right. Uh, and he's going to be of the tribe of Judah. And uh, Beth, out of Bethlehem is going to come the Messiah. He's going to come through his lineage. And go tell David that. Uh, okay. So Nathan does and says, no, you can't do it. But God has a promise for you. Okay, now read verses 25. This is 2 Samuel 7, 25 to 29, and read what, uh, what he learns about this. Sure. Now, O Lord God, the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as you have said. So let your name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel, and let the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, have revealed this to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found it in his heart to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this goodness to your servant. Now, therefore, let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue before you forever. For you, O Lord God, have spoken it, and with your blessing, let the house of your servant be blessed forever. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is where the scriptures are so beautiful, uh, because they describe so much in just a few short sentences. Um, uh, he says, uh, okay, I heard what you said. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he says he found courage in his heart mm-hmm. to go pray. Mm. Um, okay. So, uh, think about that simple statement. Uh, is that if if I have courage, what does that imply? That there's something that requires some bravery or courage, for one thing. Yeah, there's, there's something else to be fearful of potentially. Yeah, yeah there's a uh, there's a, a fortitude that um, I need to process something, mm-hmm. and I went to the processing since I didn't understand it and courage is stay with me until you do understand it. Mm. Uh, don't quit on me. Don't presume. He could have said, mm-hmm. okay, great, fantastic. Excellent. Let me know when you do. I hope it does. Uh, uh, probably since it's going to be my legacy, I'll never know it anyway. So uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, or uh, I'm trying to understand it, but I can't. So I'll just quit. Uh, yeah, I heard it, but I don't really have any any understanding of it, and I quit on it. He said, no, find courage to stay mm-hmm. with me to pray. And pray, remember, is dialogue processing. And so um, what he did was, um, I'm not sure <laughs> exactly what you're talking about here. Uh, right. You know, the Messiah, what does that mean? Who is that? Why is that coming through me? How is that going to impact what I'm doing? Uh and uh, is, it, is it so? Is, it, is that going to be so? So uh, he prays and prays and prays. 
um, and he stayed with it, implying that he was he was in there finding courage to pray, dialogue with God, you know, for probably weeks at a time. Um, and then he comes uh, to verse 28. Uh, and he prayed until he got to verse 28. Uh, read verse 28 again, and let's find out what he discovered. Yeah, I love the beauty of this. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this goodness to your servant. Yeah, and so there is the um, kind of the capsule of what we talked about last time with Nehemiah, mm -hmm. is he found courage in his heart. Um, huh. Huh. Um, I have a question about the fact that Jerusalem is destroyed and what do you have to say about that? And he, he processed, processed, processed for four months until he got to the same place. And, 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 he, and he, there's three things that he discovered. One, you are God and therefore I am not God. In other words, mm -hmm. you can fulfill what you just said because you are God, you're preeminent, you created all things. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the natural is subject to the spiritual, the word, the truth, the promise. Uh, and I understand that. And so nothing is too difficult for you. And um, I've received that. Uh, number two, uh, you, are, uh, you are God and, uh, and your words are true. Mm -hmm. um, I've received now that you spoke this and I now know that, and I'm learning that when you speak it, mm -hmm. it it's absolutely true. And it's not fuzzy to me. Uh, it's not maybe perhaps once in a while. And remember we've talked about what all the promises are. Yes. In Christ Jesus. Yes. And amen. Yeah. Uh, that um, I am going to uh, reveal to you the authority, the power of the kingdom to be able to fulfill this because it's absolutely true. And so I, I receive that now. And then third is you actually have spoken this to me personally mm -hmm. and you've involved me. Uh, so the promise, and, and so like, for example, with Nehemiah, he started with the covenant. Mm -hmm. um, well, you said you're going to bless us to make us a blessing. You said and he stood on that truth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, you know, was that a truth? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that it's a truth, but it didn't it doesn't didn't include Nehemiah? See, yes. So that it it it, it, it could even be. Well, I've understood that truth, and someday everybody's going to be restored back to Jerusalem because of that truth. And so I'm going to pray that someday that happens. And, and God said, no, I've applied this promise to you right now mm -hmm. in your lifetime. And it involves you. And I've given the promise to you personally. And that's, and that's mm -hmm. what David said is you, you've, you've given your servant the application of this word to me personally. In other words, there's a promise that now involves me. Right. And so I came to this place. I found courage in my heart to pray, pray, pray until I see that you're able to fulfill it. I know that for sure. And nothing is too difficult for you. And you're going to do it supernaturally. Your words, what you speak are absolutely true. I can trust it. And you've promised this to me. I, mm -hmm. I got it. So he gets to this point where he says, I received the promise and it's clear to me now. Uh, and so as we process that, with our spouse, as we process that with um, our inner circle, uh, it's well. You're going to hear something from God, and and, and that's, remember that's always a question. What right. do you, What do you got to say about this? Um, you know, I think I've shared this about you know Michelle of uh, you know what what's your will here? And mm -hmm. he and he spoke his will, and then we had confirmation of his will, and we had people share that together. So we came to the place of, well, you're God, your words are true. And we now heard mm -hmm. with great clarity exactly what you have to say. And it applies to us. We got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then when we get there, uh, now we can go to verse 29. What, what does verse 29 say? It says, now, therefore, let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue before you forever. For you, O Lord God, have spoken it 
And with your blessing, let the house of your servant be blessed forever. Yeah. So basically, he says, after you have come to this point of, you know that I can do it, you know that I've, my words are true, and I've applied it to you, mm-hmm. he says, and, and he said, when you do have clarity. Mm-hmm. Interesting enough, he says, you can stop praying now for clarity because you have it. Right. Now you, you, you flip it to given that I've heard it and I know that I know that I know, actually, what do I pray now? Well, may it please you to do it. Right. Uh, and this is where, by the way, remember we, we heard in uh, our conversation in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, all the promises are yes and what? Yes and amen. amen. So be it. And amen means I've received the yes Mm-hmm. Now I can pray the amen. Uh, and the and amen. trust that it will come. Yeah. And the amen, remember, is a, is a very strong Jewish concept of um, I've heard what you had to say. Mm-hmm. You've applied it to me personally. I've received it. And now I can say to you, Father, now that I understand that, may it please you to fulfill it, so be it. In mm-hmm. other words, may it be it now be turned into reality the promise that I've just prayed now becomes into reality. Um, and it's what Oswald Chamber, Chambers, who's a, who wrote a, a great devotional called My Utmost for His Highest. Uh, it's a great devotional and a good, good thing to keep reading. But he called it praying the promises. Mm-hmm. Is, well, when you get the promise, don't say, okay, good. Let me know when you do it. It's, right. let, let, may it be so keep praying and praying and praying it. And by the way, there may be steps to take for you to enter into the fulfillment of the promise mm-hmm. like Joshua had to and do. And that's part of us being invited to partner with God in prayer, right? right. That's right. Uh, so that as we look at, you know, the beauty of this is uh, uh, prayer isn't, I hope you do, mm-hmm. or I wish you would, or here's an idea. I'm going to tell you what to do, God. <laughs> uh which is always kind of funny to me, and God's kind. Of, I think God laughs at that, you know. Like, so you're you think you know what you're what's up, and you're going to tell me what to mm-hmm. do? Uh, <laughs> I think I think I know more than you, and I'm more powerful than you. And you would be benefiting if you let me deliver the covenant to you by by listening and processing and coming to a place where you hear my will, and then walk with me, like you say, partner with me, walk with mm-hmm. me into the fulfillment of it, so that as we look at the process. Uh, and we'll get into more of this as well, but um, it's it starts out ask, seek, knock. What right. what is your will? What do you have to say about this situation I'm in? Instead of me saying I'm going to or I should, or I'm never going to let mm-hmm. you uh, Jesus, you know, be killed. Uh, well, before you go there, why don't you just ask me what I have to say? Right. Uh, seek the answers, seek information, seek, seek dialoguing uh, until you understand with clarity, unity with your spouse, unity with your friend, unity with your inner circle, that you now have received clarity about my will and you now know my will. Now begin to pray it and walk with me into it step by step by step and come to that same place that David did, come to the same place that Nehemiah did is... Uh, I know you're God, your words are true, you've applied this to me, and I'm excited to have it be fulfilled as in my personal life, not hypothetically, mm-hmm. but in reality, uh, that uh, you can begin to see it mm-hmm. you know, happen you know, uh, piece by piece by piece. And, and you and I could share all kinds of examples, uh, you know, even with uh, Dan's business, uh, there's been some promises that God has given him about certain uh, products and certain customers mm-hmm. that you had to work with him. You know, let's confirm it. Um, now you said it. Now, God, may you fulfill it. And you saw in reality the things happen. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. That, that changed. Um, you know, so that uh, uh, one of the things, you know, that uh, uh, Linda and I have experienced a lot is uh, as we're processing things. Uh, that there's a lot of, sometimes there's road, what I call roadblocks mm-hmm. or things that are just stuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so 
uh, you know, hey, Father, uh, we need to hear from these attorneys on this uh, acquisition, but we're not getting any response. You know, what do you have to say about that? Is he said, well, actually, this is spiritual. You've got an enemy that's working through self-centered people to prevent them from contacting mm-hmm. you and moving forward. So I need you, first of all, we have the power to overcome it. I want you to pray so, realize what I've said and what I'm giving you the authority to do. And now you and Linda find courage in your heart that what I said is true and I've applied it to you. Now you exercise that authority. And and we would go and pray that, may, may it be so. And then literally sometimes within minutes uh, or hours, uh, we would get that phone call. Mm-hmm. from that lawyer saying, oh, hey, I'm sorry, but I'm ready now to process this. And it, and it became unstuck, uh, not because, well, God, could you please unstuck it? Uh, rather, what do you have to say about this? What do you want us to understand about it? And then now you will see it happen in reality that we could share the process and get reinforced that the promises are real, the promises are true, and we get the benefit of that. Mm-hmm. In in real life, we get things resolved. So uh, it's a it's a beautiful opportunity for us to really understand that this is how God wants us to live. By the way, how by faith, right? We trust it. We believe well, it. I think of even so. Sometimes there's like you shared, you know, an example where there's something to be done there, and then, um, you know, just recently I was asking God once again, you know, how long have we been trying to chase down this VA? money that is due my dad's estate and has still, you know, this has still not come through. And I was asking God recently, you know, so what do you have to say about this? Because I know you promised that this was going to be released and we're still not seeing it. No movement. And, you know, it's the government. So you can't even get somebody to talk to you on the phone and tell you where it's at or anything. Um, And actually it surprised me what he said. He was like, you know, actually right now the, the clog, the, what's holding it back you know you think it's the government holding it back and just being so slow it's actually a heart issue for you (laughs) and i want you yeah i mean he he literally is like you know there is still some unforgiveness that you are letting take root between things that have gone on with your sisters um recently in the last couple of years and that is actually the clog i'm not going to continue to release this blessing until you surrender that and let me bring you to full forgiveness to them before it becomes a root of bitterness you know and i think there were little things that i wasn't even recognizing and one of the steps i'm like okay god well i know enough to know if you're saying that then it must be there so show me where it is and the first step he told me was i want you to actually not just you know think through, okay, what is it that's going on? But I want you to write out the things that you need to forgive them for. And I want you to spend time on this. Mm. And so literally I kind of detailed out and there were some hurts in there that I didn't even realize until I started spending the time that he told me to spend on it, that I was holding on to. Yeah. And so that was a beginning step. Now I have no idea where we're at in the VA thing, but I know he is in the process of healing that and bringing complete forgiveness. And I know that he has said that is a step in loosening that as well. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, sometimes the steps have more to do with our heart than the physical of what's going on, because he's going to use whatever is going on to grow and change us and transform us to make us more like him and purify our hearts so that we bring him glory. Right. And, and and think about, uh, that Remember, it's a path, not a destination. So that, um, even when, um, uh, father, could you release us from the government block? Well, honey, actually, uh, Mm -hmm. it isn't the government. It's me. And, it's because of your heart, mm-hmm. and here's what I'd like you to know about. Okay, you could have said, okay, fine, I'll forgive him. Uh, I'll, I'll do it so I get the reward. He says, well, no, uh, I just alerted you to something. What did you have to do? What does that look like? What are you talking about? Um, right. help, help me understand it. It's a walking, dialoguing in more prayer to have depth. And a constant surrender. And a surrender and, asking, and yeah. to walk it through. And see, God's never in a rush. Uh, it's not like, well, you better. Right. It's rather, let me let me show you by you walking with me, staying with me for me to mm-hmm. help you understand more of this. And I'll give you the forgiveness that you need. 
I'm just asking you to stay with me in prayer, in dialogue, in relationship. Right. And then you'll get to see the fulfillment of it. And when you do, you'll realize something that it was a timing issue. And it was all about something mm-hmm. that had to do with your heart, which is what I care about. Uh, so, you know, it's really, right. it's really a beautiful right. thing. That's a great, great example. So uh, we'll continue this. Absolutely. We're going to, we're going to move into uh, the next section here. Uh, we're going to talk about hindrances. What are things that hinder our ability to dialogue and to experience that, you know, he, he is God, his words are true and, the, and he's a promise this mm-hmm. and so be it. He said, yeah, there's, there's things that can prevent that. And we need to understand what they are. We're going to get into that next. So we'll see that uh, next uh, tomorrow when we get into it. Excellent. All right. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. As always, if you have questions, send them in to questions at afjministry.com. And we will be happy to talk about them. Yep. And meanwhile, thanks again for joining us and have a great day. Yep. We'll see you soon. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.